the governor is not mincing his words, saying that the task ahead is daunting, and all it takes is yet another look at that over there to understand why. You have part of the key bridge here in Baltimore completely submerged. You have other parts of it, millions of pounds lying on top of this cargo ship here. So you wonder, how do you even clean up the wreckage? Well, enter this, the Chesapeake 1000. It is a crane that can pick something up that weighs 2 million pounds. Let that is just one of the massive tools that's going to be used in this very challenging job ahead. Three days since the bridge collapse seen around the world and still a pile of questions about what happens next. To go out there and to see it up close, you realize just how daunting a task this is. You realize how difficult the work is ahead of us. Maryland Governor Westmore giving a glimpse into the challenging road ahead. First, he says, is the recovery, providing closure to the families who still have missing loved ones. Next is clearing the channel and reopening the port of Baltimore to vessels. Third, taking care of everybody affected by the collapse, including the 8,000 Baltimore port-related jobs that are in limbo. And fourth, rebuilding the bridge. So I can't say right now if this is going to be, if this, how, what's the time period? I can tell you it is not going to be days or weeks or months. This is going to take time. Just reopening the port is a daunting task. Coast Guard officials describing it in three steps, clearing the debris from the channel, then removing the vessel, and finally moving all that sharp and mangled debris from the waterway. Going in a place where the key bridge once proudly was erected and to be able to go under where it was and look up and see the blue sky and not see the bridge. Okay, guys, so just to give you an idea of the size of the site that we're looking at right now, that cargo ship, Maryland Governor um, Moore, Wes Moore, told reporters today that it is about the size of the Eiffel Tower. Hmm. He was able to tour the site with the Coast Guard today. And when he talked about all of that mangled debris you see there uh, covering the front part of this cargo ship, you know, he said it was amazing to see these massive shipping containers that we see, uh, you know, being driven around on the highways, sliced like mm. paper mache, yeah. Millette. Just to give you an idea of how difficult it is to navigate that area because of how dangerous that wreckage is. You're talking about road, literally a road. You're talking about bridge. You're talking about steel, concrete, everything. Um, all these different types of materials, uh, and it's and it's very, very dangerous uh, for for first responders as they continue this uh, this recovery and this salvage effort. Yeah, you put Back it all you. in perspective. The enormity of it all, the cleanup, the massive amount of time and money it will take to make all of this happen. The convenience uh, to traffic and of course commerce but let's get back to the victims who are still missing right now this evening Joseph what about the yeah. victims yeah you know just a very unfortunate um, uh, situation for the families of uh, four people who are still missing uh, they are presumed dead. We know that earlier this week, two bodies were recovered uh, from the scene. All in all, six people presumed uh, dead. Um, and right now, the search for the people who are in the Patapsco River has been paused because of how dangerous it is. I mean, they keep on telling us that visibility is practically nothing. It's like being in a dark room. Uh, in that water there. So they really can't see anything. And with all these sharp um, edges to the bridge and to the roadway, uh, they got to wait until they clear out all this debris to be able to get back down there for the rest of these victims. Again, four people who are still still missing. This is Millette. a human tragedy. Joseph Omo, thank you so very much for your live report.